I have a surprise for you all tonight. We're going to take a trip to the Holy Land. The most fascinating, exciting, and rewarding experience as far as travel is concerned in my life was in the few months ago when I took the trip to the land of Jesus, the land that knew Jesus and that Jesus knew. In our audience tonight, we have a very famous a Christian Arab, a man of God, a man in that land who gave his life to Christ as a young man and who is now the keeper or the warden of the empty tomb in Jerusalem. He is my dear and beloved friend. His healing was the first miracle that God wrought through my prayers after I landed in old Jerusalem. And I want you to know how happy I am that Mr. S.J. Matter, the keeper of the garden tomb in old Jerusalem, is in our audience tonight. Will you give him a hand? There he is, over there to my left. In the company of Dr. Myron Sackett, who's in charge of our Hebrew Bible work, I flew from Tulsa, Oklahoma, to Jerusalem. We went, first of all, to Paris, then to Rome, and to Cairo, Egypt. And when we arrived in that land, we saw the time seem to stand still. We were able to uh, catch a plane that took us to Jerusalem from Cairo, flying almost directly over the Sinai uh, uh, route that uh, Moses and the children of Israel took and which they covered in about 40 years. It only took us two or three hours to make the same trip. When we came near the, the Holy Land, we first saw the Dead Sea, near which are the sites of old Sodom and Gomorrah, and by that time, of course, I was all eyes and ears. And, and as we flew right over the Dead Sea, the pilot said, Mr. Roberts, look over to my left. He said, you see that city? And there, like a diamond on a velvet couch, 2,500 feet above sea level was the beautiful old city of Jerusalem. I thought my heart would break out of my chest. When I looked down for the first time and saw the land over which the sandal feet of Jesus carried him from town to town where he reached out his hands to save and heal the afflicted and lost of that generation. We landed at the airport and, and were met by many people who had heard of our coming. We were ushered into the city, and uh, the first thing I wanted to do was to find our guide, which we found, Mr. Mahmoud Kamish, a very fine Arab Muslim, and uh, our first uh, visit was to Bethlehem. That little town is the Church of the Nativity, uh, which is controlled, I believe, by the Greek Catholic, the, the uh, Roman Catholic, and the Armenian, the, the three different ones. And they agreed for us to film the holy site in the stable, in the very spot where it is believed that Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary. And they have a little star in the floor of the place that's marking what they believe is the precise spot, and it was my privilege to kneel down and to place my hand upon that star and to say right here, Mary, without a doctor, without a hospital, without any friends to stand by, just Joseph, in that spot, she gave birth to Jesus and wrapped him in swaddling clothes. And I walked across to the spot where they laid him in the manger. It was my uh, privilege to visit Gethsemane next, the old gnarled olive trees are still there. Some of them, no doubt, thousands of years old. There are not so many now because some have been taken away, but there are enough to give you that wonderful charge, that feeling that you're standing on holy ground. I then made preparation to take the walk from the Hall of Pilate through all the stations of the cross to the hill of Golgotha where Jesus was nailed to the cross. And as I walked along, it seemed to me that I could see and hear and feel all the sights and sounds and feelings that must have been resident in the lives of those people that day, and especially in the heart and mind and body of our Savior. When we passed through the gate, 
We turned to our right and walked perhaps a quarter of a mile. And all the time my head was down, I was praying and thinking and meditating upon God. And suddenly my mood calmly stopped me and said, Mr. Roberts, wait a minute. I turned and he said, look. When I looked upon that hill resembling a rotted human skull, I can tell you now what happened to me. The frame of mind I was in was such that suddenly I began to quiver as though I had a chill. The tears burst from my eyes and I shook and cried like I was a child. Standing there in the road looking at that hill, knowing what took place there 2,000 years ago for my soul, that I might be saved, that I might be healed. Suddenly I said to Mr. Kamish, I want to go on top of that hill. He said, oh no, you can't do that, it's dangerous. A Muslim cemetery is up there. I said, Mr. Kamish, I've got to go. He said, all right, if you insist. And so we went way around in the back and threaded our way through the Muslim tombs and came to, to, to the very brow of the hill and standing there on that holy site, I bowed my head and began to read the story of the crucifixion. I had some names in my pocket of uh, friends who had asked me to pray for them. I took them out and knelt and called their names. And as I stood there reading and praying, Mr. Mahmoud Kamish came up and very quietly he said, Mr. Roberts, do you love your Savior that much? Turning to him, I said, Mr. Kamish, you will never know. No one will ever know how much I love him, for I do not have the words to say uh, how much I love him today. Then he said, now, I want you to look over here to your right. Oh, maybe 200 feet. Now he said, there is Gordon's tomb. That's the tomb that we believe is the authentic tomb. He said, that's Joseph's garden, the garden of Joseph of Arimathea, the rich man who gave up his tomb for the burial of Jesus Christ. We uh, descended the hill and came into the garden where we met Mr. Matter for the first time. Now, Mr. Matter uh, was, uh, had been injured in an automobile accident and one of his legs was in a cast clear up to his thigh or his hip. And he was on walking sticks and he apologized for not being able to show us over the garden as he might have liked. And I said, well, Mr. Matter, I'm Oral Roberts from America. I'm a Christian evangelist. I've come here to pray. Uh, in America, I have a large tent that seats uh, many thousands of people. And as I tried to explain, I saw that, that it was difficult for him to grasp exactly what I was talking about. I said, now, I preach the gospel. I win souls to Christ. I offer prayer for the sick. And I said, I noticed that you have a, have a bad leg. He said, yes, I do. I said, Mr. Matter, I feel the inspiration of the resurrection, feel the power of the Lord in my soul. I want to pray for someone, and would you let me pray for you? I said, you are a Christian Arab. He said, yes. Do you believe in prayer for the sick, the healing of the sick through Christ? He said, yes. I said, would you let me pray for you? Looking at me, it seemed for a minute, he said, well, yes, I will go right ahead. So I put my hand on the cast, ran my hand down it, and on up here to his hip. And I put my hand there in the name of Jesus, and I prayed in the name of that resurrected Lord. And standing there in the very spot where he broke the bonds of death, where he said, because I live, ye shall live also, I could feel the life of Jesus flowing into me and out of me into that man's injured limb. So I prayed for him, and I went away. That night, we received a telephone call at the hotel for Mr. Matter to come down to his house. I was not able to go, so Dr. Sackett went, and pretty soon he came hurrying back, and he said, Mr. Matter is healed. I had a tremendous experience in the Holy Land, for the thing I found was our Savior. Since then, I have felt I've been closer to him, and I feel I'm closer to Christ now than I've ever been in my whole life. Sometimes I feel like I can reach out and touch the hem of his garment. The Lord is in this audience. He's here right now. 